Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Sorry? Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was actually testing now the Sony LinkBuds S. And the LinkBuds S comes with noise cancelling. So, uh, active noise cancelling at that. And um, I didn't hear you. I should have been using the LinkBuds, the original LinkBuds, because that would have given me full awareness to my surrounding. And if you were calling me earlier, I would have heard that. But the LinkBuds S, which is what I was listening to earlier, is the complete antithesis of the original Link Buzz, just with the addition of an S. Let's get to that. So when I first reviewed the original Link Buzz, this is what it is here, and I referred to them as the holy grail of transparency because it is actually donut shaped. This hole in the middle is letting in all the sound. There's nothing that is blocking your ears, nothing that is actually stopping the sound from the outside world to come in. Now, recent years, noise cancelling has gotten really good with a lot of competitors of the original noise cancelling like Bose. Uh, Sony has made some really great headphones as well as earbuds for noise cancelling and they've all gotten really great. But there are cases when you don't want noise cancelling and you need transparency so that you get some awareness of the surrounding. An example being if you are running along the roads and you need to be aware of uh, traffic that is coming from behind you and in Singapore the, you know there's this cyclist situation that you have to contend with because they are riding on the same footpaths as you are and there will also be cases like um, if you are working in the office and you want to be aware of people around you or coming up from behind you to call for you and to get your attention, you want to be able to respond to them. But if you are listening to complete noise cancelling or even um, non-active noise cancelling, you might not hear those people. Now, another situation which is common for me is that if you are going out, if you're going to the coffee shop or you're going to be placing an order for food and you're completely uh, blocked from external sounds and it starts to attenuate all the voices when you're communicating your order across and they're confirming it with you you can't actually hear them right i can read lips and i can kind of like tell what they are talking about and what their response is but today because of the COVID situation, everybody is masked up. So I can't read their lips anymore. So I do uh, appreciate the fact that the original Sony Link Buds actually gave me real transparency. Not relaying it via a mic, but offering real transparency into my ears from the outside world. Now, the naming convention aside, it is um, the original is called the Link Buds and the new ones which is newly released, is the LinkBuds S. So the original LinkBuds sells for about 179 US dollars and the LinkBuds S with the active noise cancelling, a few other features amongst that, um, it sells for 199 dollars. So at first glance, we are thinking that 20 dollars bump for a noise cancelling, active noise cancelling is a reasonable price to pay but it is actually not an apple to apple comparison. I don't even call this an upgrade. These are completely different phones. Now Apple has made a big deal about putting the iPhone 5, 5S out and then in fact it went back as far as the 3G, right? 3G, 3GS, uh, 4, 4S, I think they stopped somewhere at about uh, iPhone 10, iPhone 10 and iPhone 10s. So S seems to be an incremental update of the same thing, but these are completely different in design. I'm going to talk a little bit about um, some of the physical differences and the things that you can observe. What you're getting for $179 on the original Link Buds versus the $199 on the upgraded or rather the antithesis of the original Link Buds, the Link Buds. Yes. Okay, so right off the bat, the original Link Buds, they are actually very small, very compact. And when I first got them, I felt that, yeah, they are super light and super comfortable. To be honest, they don't really fit into my ears very well uh, because they don't have the silicon tip 
to actually uh, jam it into my ear canal, right? But uh, they are a very light pair of phones, so light that even if the fit wasn't great, the actual weight wasn't going to pull it out of the ear. So I did go walking around with it and it wasn't much of a problem. But the Link Buds S, okay, they are the... Um, they, they, they do have the silicon tip and these offers uh, some kind of like a friction into your ear canals and I didn't change any tips so the box itself when it came it does have a few other uh, silicon tip sizes which you can customize to fit your ears but um, I took this out of the box original didn't change the size jammed it in and it fit perfectly for me and for noise cancelling earphones these are actually very very light i mean and and they are a lot more compact than what i'm used to uh well i do have the apple um airpods pro and those are noise cancelling as well um, but they have a stamp coming out so if you ask me the balance may not be as great as these but these are, on the other hand, a little bit bulkier than the AirPods Pro. So I'm undecided uh, which one I like better in terms of design. The AirPods Pro, they also have um, the control stem. So you actually have to touch the control stem. These are touch controls by tapping the side. I don't really like the tapping on the side because it feels like I'm um, sending shock waves through my eardrums every time I'm operating it. So the left and the right can be configured separately and uh, for different actions. In terms of colorway, I think the original uh, Link Buds, it comes in a slightly grayish tone as compared to this new one, which is actually a little bit uh, more of a matte black. So the Sony logo is actually printed on in the original. And for this, it is actually embossed so uh, let me get that in focus yep and this is embossed right so there is a slight difference now the casing in itself this is the original link bus configuration which is horizontal you click it open and this is how it looks like it's a clamshell design like this the the new link bus s on the other hand um, there's no button to press to eject the cover you just flip it open this is reminiscent of the AirPods Pro, uh, well, the light is right in front, and you are able to then put in, put back the uh, earbuds, and they are magnetically clicked back in space, in place. Close the cover, and it starts charging. At the rear, you have a USB-C port, and this USB-C port uh, for charging is convenient because uh, there are so many USB-C devices. I'm glad they use a USB-C port. There's a connect button, and this base is actually flat so that you can stand it on its side. So this is very similar uh, in terms of dimensions and size, a little bit thicker than the AirPods Pro uh, casing, but um, this extra casing itself, it lands 14 hours of charging on top of the original 6 that is being provided by the earbuds itself. In the original Link Buds S, the earbuds itself provides 5.5 hours, uh, definitely good enough for long calls, and the casing itself lands another uh, 12 hours, I think. Yeah, 12 hours. So let me just refer to that. Yep, the casing uh, itself lands 12 hours. And confirm, this one is uh, the new Link Buds S is 6 plus 14 so for a total of 20 hours of runtime it should suffice for most flights if you're going to be flying that far anyway and talk about flights the noise cancelling so obviously the main difference what the link bus and the link bus s is is the active noise cancelling and they make a big deal of it there are other things like for example the link bus s support uh uh, DSEE and it as well and the protocol it supports LDAC as well so if you're running uh, Sony uh, mobile phones Sony devices or uh, any other Android devices or any other music player that supports LDAC it is actually a much higher bit rate uh, sound transmission protocol wireless transmission protocol than the regular AAC or the SBC that um, Apple devices can support so if you are on Android this is actually a good thing okay and the next thing I want to be talking about is the sound quality now sound quality is subjective now i have to say this again to a lot of uninitiated to a lot of people a lot of uh, um, the, the mass audience out there people who are buying earphones or buying headphones buying speakers sound devices they 
look for loudness, they look for bass, and they look for clarity. But what stands out most is actually the loudness, or rather the perceived loudness of things. Now, in the original Link Bus, because it is a full transparent design by physical design, right? Uh, and you don't have a choice to block out external sound, even if you wanted to. It lets in a lot of ambient sound. And sound or the perception of loudness is a relative thing. So if you're listening your, to your music at, say, an arbitrary uh, level, let's say 50, right? and the outside noise is 50, you kind of like perceive the music to be a net, um, like you, you can't hear anything because it's fighting with the sound from outside. You end up having to try to bump the volume up to maybe 70, 80, so that you can distinguish the music from the outside noise. But how ANC works is that it lowers that outside noise, that noise floor, all the way to say 20. So even if you're at a 50 volume, for your music, you are able to discern the music out from the surrounding, from the ambient noise. And therefore, you're good enough for volume 50. But uh, you have to bear in mind, your ears are still going to be getting that level of 50 or 80, uh, regardless of whether your brain is perceiving it to be loud enough to enjoy your music. So in terms of sound quality, I... I actually have to give it to the Link Buds S and uh, this particular review tells me one thing. I like noise cancelling. Noise cancelling is my thing. It makes everything else quieter. You know, in my room setup here, in my studio setup here, I try so hard to bring down external sounds. I put up these foam walls. I put up this kind of uh, uh, sound absorption pads and even my door, I try to do something. You know, it's these little kind of things that um, I do to bring down the noise floor so that your signal ratio, the signal to noise ratio is actually high enough for you to enjoy your music without having to try to pump it up very, very high. And that's why a lot of uh, audiophiles will tell you that they tend to treat their room uh, as a priority, treat as in sound treatment, uh, rather than upgrading their gear. But intuitively, a lot of people want to buy gear, right? I want to buy gear too. So if you ask me to choose between these two, I would say I want to do noise cancelling. But noise cancelling has that problem, right, with blocking sounds even when you need them. So when you are running on the roads, when you're trying to place an order at a cafe or when you are in a um, co-working or an open working space environment and you want to be aware of your surrounding, that's where transparency comes in. Now, transparency on the Sony Link Bus S is pretty well implemented. And I'll go through a couple of things. If you go inside the app, you will realize that you can actually turn transparency on, you can turn transparency off, and noise cancelling off. So there are actually three modes. Um, sorry, let me just repeat that again. You have active noise cancelling, you have transparency, and you have both turned off. So both turned off means it's just... Uh, relying strictly on passive sound attenuation because of the silicon tip. It does block out some of the sound, but it doesn't turn on the mics to let in, uh, to amplify the outside sound. Now, transparency can be set from levels 1 to 20. And when it is on 20, it's as though you have superhuman hearing and you can actually hear things better than without the earphone. So this how uh, how sensitive the transparency on the Link Bus S can get. Now, the good thing about this Sony Link Bus S is that the transparency can be automatically turned on, right? So they have uh, this auto mode where you are able to um, turn on transparency or turn on noise cancelling depending on where you are and depending on what you're doing. So you can be, uh, if you're stationary, it will turn on noise cancelling. If you're walking or if you're running, then or you're on transport, it will turn on or off noise cancelling and transparency accordingly. So uh, it is quite nifty. Now, I haven't tested that extensively, but the idea itself is that uh, you don't have to 
click, double click, go to the phone to set all this, it will learn from where you are after they will tell it to um, to turn on noise uh, cancelling or not to turn on transparency. So if you are in the office, for example, it will automatically turn on transparency. If you are running, that means it will detect that you need to be aware of your surrounding. It will turn on transparency. So I think it's a, a pretty cool feature. Now, the last feature that makes this transparency so interesting, it has an auto turn on transparency when you start to talk. So if you are speaking, right? So I'm wearing the LingBuds S, I'm going up to the cafe and I start ordering. So the moment I open my mouth and it detects that I'm actually trying to speak, it will turn on transparency so that I can hear the response. You can um, set how sensitive it is uh, from uh, low to medium to high and you can also set the duration where it remains transparent after you stop talking all the way from 5 seconds to 15 seconds or to a lot longer. I can't actually remember that feature in itself. It tries to automate how I use uh, the Apple AirPods Pro because uh, when I start walking to place my order, I actually turn on transparency mode so that I can hear. And when I'm done and I'm back to my music, I actually turn off transparency, turn on active noise cancelling. So what this does is it actually automates that process without me even lifting a hand or a finger. So I thought that that is a, actually a very, very cool feature. Okay, so as a parting shot, I think this is a great um, and a very lightweight earbuds uh, with active noise cancelling for $199. I'm sure you can get it at uh, various um, discounts around the country or wherever you are. Um, in in this particular packaging, I actually noticed something. Now, this is the original LingBus S. There is a model name here. So you'll see this is WF900. Uh, I think, let me see. Uh, yep, it's WF. L900. Now, in the new upgraded, uh, or rather the antithesis of the original LingBuds, on the LingBuds S, you are looking at another model name here, which is the WFLS900N. Now, so the, the confusing model names are still there. I am actually glad that Sony started giving names to this, right? LingBuds and LingBuds S. But I just can't um, understand the rationale behind why do you call it Link? Okay, the buds itself, yes, yeah, buds, I get it. But link buds and then link buds S. If Sony only made two earphones, I think it's okay, right? Um, but why S for noise cancelling? Uh, I don't know. But it's it's still uh, I'm I would say uh, not very mature yet in terms of uh, Sony's naming conventions. But I'm sure they will get around this. But because Sony makes a lot of different products in a lot of different lineups. Uh, they make TVs, they make so many things, right? Um, I'm, I'm very sure they'll find up a good way to name this. But naming aside, I think these are great earphones and this is probably something I'll use on a much more regular basis, honestly, than the original Link Buds, which is fully transparent because I still like my music. If I know I'm going to be out running, um, I would say I will still stick to the Link Buds with full um, physical transparency because I think that is still the safer option. But on a day-to-day -day basis, if I'm going to the office, I'm stepping out for lunch alone, then maybe the LinkBus S will actually serve me much better. I'll see you in my next video.